bank loan advisor, who knows the first step in advising is listening, understanding. That the most important aspect of expertise is not what we know, but how we apply it to what we learn about you. Visit horizonbank.com and get a conversation started. This from the Icebox Skating Rink in South Bend, Indiana, the Regional Radio Sports Network is proud to present the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Championship Tournament. Tonight, the number six seeded Valparaiso Vikings, which come in with a record of 9, 28, and 2 on the season, take on the top ranked Eagles of South Bend, John Adams, coming in with a record of 30, 14, and two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. J.P. Jobert, along with my broadcast partner, Nick Duranik. Christian Jobert will be with us momentarily. And, Nick, a wild tournament so far as we've seen the number one team, Adams, get knocked out into the loser's bracket in the winner's bracket semifinals. They got beat by a Penn squad that was hungry and determined. And now the Kingsmen will take on Lakeshore on Friday night in a game that is sure to be very high-paced, very physical. But before we get to that, it's Valparaiso and Adams here on Icebox One. Yeah, we're looking forward to a, a great game tonight, and we're looking at a Adams team who has been very, very strong in, in the Mitchell play this year, and they came in looking real strong for the tournament, went against a very hot Penn team though at the same time, and from my experience watching Mitchell games for over the past decade, you can never count Penn out. They've always learned how to play very, very well. But we look at an Adams team coming in here. You know, they had that little bit of a uh, backtrack against Penn. They're coming in against a struggling Valpo team tonight, and this could be a game where, you know, they get their, their skates back on the ice and they're looking to recoup a little bit just so they can move on and get to uh, another game on Friday night. We're going to be talking with... Valparaiso head coach Tim Crowley momentarily as we look over the city bracket, the winner's bracket portion of the tournament. It started last Friday night as Penn knocked off Riley 4-1 in the first of two winner's bracket quarterfinal matchups. The second one had South Bend St. Joe shutting out Valparaiso 3-0. Both of those teams moved on to the winner's bracket semifinals on Saturday night. Penn, as we made mention, 4-1 winners over Adams. Ethan Matthews, eight goals for Penn in two contests to help his team get to that winner's bracket championship game, which will take place on Friday. Lakeshore thoroughly dominated, in the words of Chris Cleva, thoroughly dominated South Bend St. Joseph 5-2 to knock them into the loser's bracket as well. Tonight's matchups... Over on rink two right now, it's Riley and South Bend St. Joe at last check at the end of one period. It is all knotted up at 1-1. One, one. As goals from Kuntz and File for Riley and St. Joe respectively as now that game is just under four minutes to go in the second period. We will keep you up to date on that one. But our game here from rink one, the Lerman Arena here at the Icebox Skating Rink will be Valparaiso and Adams. And when we come back after this two-minute timeout, we're going to sit down with Tim Crowley, the head coach of the Valparaiso Vikings, get his thoughts on the city tournament as well as his opponent tonight, the Adams Eagles. As you're watching and listening to the 2019 Michigan High School Hockey League City Tournament right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Horizon Bank Commercial for Loans. It's a time most advertisers carve out to tell you all about themselves, why you should like them. In short, a chance for them to talk to you. So why aren't we telling you about our loan services? We're waiting for you to tell us about yourself, because what you have to say is more important than what we have to say. Visit horizonbank.com to get a conversation started. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, the Marines. 
is all. When your child's in the hospital, the last thing you want to do is to leave their bedside. If we had to leave the hospital at any time, it would have drove us nuts. The family room was definitely a blessing for us. We needed to be close to our daughter, and it gave us exactly what we needed at that time. Make a difference in the life of a family when they need it most. Give to the Ronald McDonald House at Memorial Children's Hospital in South Bend. Donate to our new house at loveshinethrough.org. Hi, this is Paul Condry of the Regional Radio Sports Network. That may be my professional title, but did you know that I'm also the son of a U.S. Navy World War II veteran and the proud father of the United States Marine? Let me share with you something very close to my heart. It's called the Semper Fi Fund and its program, America's Fund, which provides immediate lifetime support for post-9-11 wounded, critically ill, and injured members of the U.S. Armed Forces, veterans, and their families to ease recovery and transition back home to their communities. The Semper Fi Fund, serving those who preserve our freedom. The basic idea that drives these efforts is simple. For as much as our heroes have sacrificed, they deserve the best care and support available in their hour of need whenever it may occur. The Semper Fi Fund, a four-star charity and an A-plus rating, has served over 16,000 members since 2004. The Semper Fi Fund, serving those who preserve our freedom. For more information, visit them online at www.semperfifund.org. Back at the Ice Box here on the Regional Radio Sports Network as we get sent for the Michiana High School Hockey League playoffs here in the loser's bracket between the six-seeded Valpo Vikings and the top-seeded South Bend Adams Eagles. Beef O'Brady's and Grangers is the place to go before or after the game. Locally owned and operated for just over a decade, they are a family-oriented business featuring a private party room with seating for up to 60 people along with an outside patio area that can seat up to 20 guests. Located at State Road 23 and Bittersweet Road, Beef's has daily specials on Monday through Fridays and offers dine-in and carry-out service. They're also the spot to watch all of your sporting events. And for more information, call 574-271-1415. Beef O'Brady's good food, good sports. Before we get to tonight's game between Valparaiso and Adams, we had a chance to sit down with Tim Crowley, the head coach of Valparaiso, and get his thoughts on today's action. Welcome back to Regional Radio Sports Network's coverage of the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League Championship Tournament. Here with Tim Crowley, the head coach of the Valparaiso Vikings. Tim, you guys played a hard-fought game against South Bend St. Joe on Friday night. Now, despite the loss, what did you like about the way that your team played? Well, actually, we thought, uh, you know, we kind of challenged the kids to come out and play hard, contest the puck all over the ice, you know, make a commitment to what we've been trying to do this year, and that game they really did. I mean, they stepped up, they played hard. Um, we kind of have a saying where as long as everybody does what they're supposed to do and gives it their best effort, we're, we'll go home pretty happy. So, You guys are a really young team, especially up front. How have your young forwards, they're led by Bryce Garber, Andrew Lafferty, and Liam George, how have they performed for you this year? They've actually done a, a really, really nice job. Uh, they've, they've improved a lot over the uh, over the course of the year. Um, we picked up Colin Bussey part of the way through the year. He came back off an injury. He's been a real nice surprise for us. Um, Liam's a senior, although he's only played with the club for a couple years. He's done a nice job too. They've they've done a nice job of progressing. Um, it's just tough when you're young playing against older players. I mean. You know, you're 15, 16 playing against 18-year-olds. Uh, it's tough, but the kids have come around, and uh, I'd like to think we're a lot better team now than we were back in September. Is this a team that in the next couple of years is going to be one of the more dangerous teams, not just in this area, but quite possibly the state, with the way that your roster shapes up right now? Um, I don't know about the state in this area. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can have some success, but again, the kids have to make the commitment to keep getting better every year. You know, we can't we can't stand still. We got to keep uh, keep progressing, keep getting better. Your defense isn't afraid of stepping up into the play and joining the offense, but they're also obviously not afraid to play that physical style. What makes your defense so difficult to play against? Uh, the nice thing, but those are those are kids that really like to play hockey. They're they're aggressive kids. They work hard. Uh, I would say of the five defensemen we have, although we're down Ben Swihart tonight, our our top defenseman, um, those kids all like to compete. And and like in any sport, if you compete hard, you're going to have some success. Your goaltending has seen a lot of rubber this year. What has your goaltending tandem meant to your squad this season? 
Uh, like the, a lot like the forwards, they're kind of younger guys. Even though they're juniors, I don't think they've seen a lot of action in high school. Um, I think uh, they're starting to get used to the workload. Henry especially has started to be a little bit more consistent. I think early in the year with all the shots, I don't think they were used to that. Um, also, too, we, uh, we've been kind of spoiled here at Valpo the last few years. We've had some pretty solid goaltending. You look across the ice, you see the top seeded Adams Eagles. What makes them such a tough opponent? And what are some of the keys to victory for Valparaiso tonight? Well, they've got great depth. I mean, they've got two lines that are probably as good as any in the state. Um, they've also got a great goaltender um, and a couple solid, real solid defensemen. Uh, I think in order for us to have some success tonight, we've got to play like we did against St. Joe. We've got to contest the puck all over the ice, and uh, we've got to compete for 45 minutes. We can't take any time off. All right, Tim, best of luck, not just this weekend, but in the state tournament as well. Thanks, JP. Appreciate it. All right, we'll be back with more right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network and on the World Wide Web. Gates Automotive has the Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles that you need. Winning the President's Award 13 years in a row, Gates Toyota has more than 100 Toyotas in their lot and are happy to help you find the right car. Come to Gates Toyota in South Bend for the automotive experience that you've always wanted. For more information, go to GatesToyota.com. They say growth is a journey and not a destination. At Teachers Credit Union, we agree. Helping our communities grow has been our mission ever since we began our journey in 1931. And supporting our members' growth has helped us to become Indiana's largest credit union. And we're just getting started. Whatever you want to grow, Teachers Credit Union is ready to help. Visit a branch or tcunet.com today. Teachers Credit Union deposits are federally insured by the NCUA, and we are an equal housing opportunity. They say growth is a journey. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back to Regional Radio Sports Network's coverage of the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament. Just a reminder that we will be, our continuing coverage will take place on Friday as we'll have a double header for you. Game one will be at 6.15. It'll be the winner of Riley St. Joe taking on the winner of Valparaiso Adams. And at last count, it is two to one Riley at the end of two periods. Riley is being outshot 31 to 11, but yet Michael Peterson has 30 saves in goal for the Wildcats. And game two on Friday night, will have the LSJ Warriors taking on the Penn Kingsmen. Our coverage continues on Saturday as well as we will have the Michiana High School Hockey League semifinal game from here at the Icebox. Six o'clock is the opening puck drop and the city final will be on Sunday, 3 p.m. at the Compton Family Ice Arena on the campus of the University of Notre Dame. The Adams Eagles have taken the ice and the starting lineups for the Eagles, coached by Mike Jamison, as the Eagles come in with a record of 30, 14, and 2. They come in with a dangerous top line of Hayden Breiler, Riley Jamison, and Josh Lerman. The three of them have combined for over 200 points this year. Breiler with 74, Jamison with a team high 90, and Josh Lerman with 47 points in just 28 games played. They'll be followed by Brandon Tao, Alex Bogle, and Ryan Albano. 41, 36, and 24 points respectively. And a third line of Nathan Middlebrook with Matthias Webb on the other wing and Ryan McGowan in the middle. On defense for the Eagles, Charlie Friel and Zane Sanders. Those two have combined for 19 points. Ben Kincaid, a man you've got to watch out for. He's a uh, senior defenseman 
on this crew. 28 penalty minutes in 28 games. He knows how to play the physical game. He'll be lined up with Augie Perigini and Gavin Zolvinski is the fifth defenseman. Vince Shaw is the scheduled starter tonight. 21-9-0 on the season. Coming in with a 9-0-4 save percentage for shutouts. He's only allowed 67 goals on 697 shots. Send it over to Nick for the starting lineups for the Valparaiso Vikings. Looking at that first line, we're going to see Bryce Garber, Andrew Lafferty, and uh, Colin Bussey. And probably right now their second strongest line when you look at points-wise, just around 50. Second line, we got Liam George with the team high 24 points, followed by Robbie Geis and Chandler Garber. Third the line of forwards, you have Ron Stone, Quinton Gooby, and Daniel Zielinski. On the defensive side for the Vikings, we'll see Sam Borger and Cameron Duranek, along with Lucas Harris and Zach Skinner. And uh, as far as goalies go, we're talking about uh, number 50, Anthony Stouffer, getting the tentative start in goal. He's got a 3-7-1 uh, record. 218 shots on goal against him. He's been able to save 168 of those, going for 50 goals against him. That makes for a 771 save percentage, and he's able to have one shutout so far this year. And the Vikings, again, come into this game with a record of 928. And two. The Adams Eagles, coached by Mike Jamison. They will be going from right to left on your computer screen or mobile device. And they are going to be in the white home jerseys with the blue and red trim with the very famous Adams Eagle on the front of the sweater. Blue pants with red and white stripes along the sides. White socks with a very thick red stripe around the middle, outlined in blue. Valparaiso coming in with the road green uniforms with the white and black trim. Valpo in script along the front. Green pant shells with white socks with the green and black stripes all up and down the sock. We gave you the city tournament preview. After this weekend, every team in the state of Indiana will be vying for a coveted state title. The Valparaiso Vikings are going to be in Class 1A. They will be heading down to Fort Wayne in two weeks, while the Adams Eagles are the number three team in the state of Indiana. They are going to have some home cooking as they are going to stay home for the state tournament, and they get a really tough first-round opponent when they take on the Ice Hounds of Carmel Gold. Not an easy opponent no, if you're Mike Jamison and company. Yeah, you look at that 4A lineup, I mean, taking a look at a lot of the uh, talent that's going to be up here in South Bend that weekend, you're going to see a lot of good hockey when it comes to see who's going to invite for that uh, 4A state title, which uh, this year is going to be at the Midwest Ice Center in Dyer, Indiana, here in just a few weeks. So, I mean, just looking at that, you're going to see good games everywhere you go for that first round, even uh, in the, as you continue on. That one you, you, you don't see <laughs> You don't see any easy game when it comes to those. You have good teams. you got great talent out on the ice. And it's going to be a good uh, one to look at when you buy for the 4A. Lakeshore is the number two team in the city here in the Michiana High School Hockey League. They're the eighth seed in the state, and they draw Culver A. So if you're Culver, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to take them lightly. Penn and Lake Central Blue are the two teams also in the upper bracket. That's the 4-5 matchup. The 2-7 matchup is Zionsville out of the Hoosier League in Indianapolis taking on South Bend St. Joe. And we made mention of the 3-6 matchup between Adams and Carmel Golden over in 1A down in Fort Wayne. Yeah, we look at, uh, as JP just mentioned, Valparaiso will be taking on Crown Point White in that matchup. In the other uh, first round matchups, you got Fort Wayne Bishop Dwanger taking on a play-in. And then along with uh, Westfield and uh, Lake Central White in the next game. And the other first round game you'll have is Carmel Blue taking on the Fort Wayne Bruins. So both teams getting their all the pucks into the net as Christian Jobert has joined us finally. Good to see him as he has joined the fray. He'll be on the camera for us, and he'll bring you all the pictures and descriptions of this contest as we get set for face-off. 
Valparaiso to our left, Adams to our right. As Barry Mead and John Eason are two referees. Are over by the Adams bench, talking it up with Mike Jamison. As Jeff Lafferty and Amy Petrie are off ice officials in the score box for us tonight. I like the round of officials we got here. You got a couple of great veterans uh, with the bands there with Easton and Mead out there. And I think Barry's been along on a uh, <laughs> on the banding since I was in high school, which is looking 10 to 15 years ago now. Barry, Barry was refereeing when Christian and I were still playing in high school. And that, you're talking over almost 25 years now. 20 in the case of Christian because he's, he's kind of a young pup. And Barry's going to be the one to drop the puck here as we get set to get started here with uh, tonight's game. As the line of Robbie Geis, Liam George, and Chandler Gerber goes up against the Jamison line. Jamison, Breiler, and Lerman. As Barry Mead signals the faceoff, and it's won by Jamison. It gets quickly picked off by Liam George. His shot's blocked by Sanders, and it goes into the far corner. So a good early effort by the Valparaiso Vikings as Jamison crosses the far blue line. He gets hit on the play but manages to keep possession of the puck. He'll go behind the net and he'll leave it for Breiler in the far corner. As Jamison picks up the loose puck, he'll go around the net to Stove to put it out in front. And Josh Lerman just couldn't handle the first pass of the game from, from Jamison. Geis will dump it back in around behind Vince Shaw, the starter for the Adams Eagles. 35 seconds gone in the first period as both teams have gotten a good look at the opposing goaltenders. Lerman going to go right by two defensemen. Going to leave it for Breiler on the far side. Puck goes in front to Jamison, and Jamison puts one on net, and Stouffer has to come up with a butterfly save as he goes from right to left, going post to post. And the first good scoring opportunity goes to the Eagles just 51 seconds into the contest. And we've already seen how quick this Adams-Eagles offense can be, including with that first line of Breiler, Jamison, and Lerman. As we mentioned in the pregame, the top line scorers here for this team, and they were already putting a test up there to Anthony Stouffer. As Bussey is going to get the puck into the zone. And now Garber throws it back behind the net. As a little bit of a line change now as both the Garbers are back on a line with Andrew Lafferty. As Bryce Garber, he's going to leave it for Lafferty along the near side. Goes out to Borger and the shot is just wide to the right of Vince Shaw. So a couple good opportunities for the Vikings here in the early goings. As Bryce Garber Gets checked by Brandon Towell. Goes back behind the net. Now to the near boards. That's Garber. One on two. It's finally dug out by Garber. Now back behind the net. It's Chandler working on Perugini. There's a quick line change going for Valparaiso. And back come the Eagles two on two. As Bogle's going to let one fly. Stouffer puts that one over the net with a blocker. So a couple of good opportunities for the Eagles here in the early going. And Anthony Stouffer, the tentative starter that we had, has been up to the challenge. As Friel comes over the blue line, he'll leave it for Bogle. Back to Friel, and he just couldn't handle the puck. And the net is off behind Anthony Stouffer. And we'll have a whistle two minutes and six seconds into the period. We were talking uh, earlier, JP, that we were seeing Anthony Stouffer get in the net. He's only been in for about 11 games so far this season compared to the usual starter, Henry Anderson, who's had 27 starts uh, this season. But uh, we're seeing uh, Anthony Stouffer get put to the test here in tonight's city game. So the faceoff to the left of Stouffer won by Valparaiso. As a 50-50 battle is going to be finally dug out by Middlebrook. As Friel on the near side is going to send it right towards Stouffer. And the puck's going to come out of the zone. And back to get it is Friel in the neutral zone. He'll dump it off for McGowan. And McGowan dances around and scores as he puts one over the glove side of Anthony Stouffer. And it's 1-1, or 1-0 rather, in favor of Adams. We were just waiting to see how long it takes this uh, quick Adams Eagles offense to really get going there. And we see it from the third line. We're, you're expecting uh, anything coming real quick from that first line. But, you know, when you look up and down this Adams Eagles uh, 
these forwards, they're all real quick, they're all real strong, and third line takes care of it as it's 1-0 Adams. Well, that's something that Tim Crowley made mention of in the interview, just how deep and talented that this Adams Eagles squad is. And right there, Ryan McOwen, with his eighth of the season, makes it 1-0. As Shaw is going to leave it off, and it's going to go out of play. And the faceoff will stay in the Adams zone to the right of the senior netminder. So one nothing in favor of Adams, 238 into the contest. The faceoffs are one back and shot on just wide of Shaw. As a loose puck goes behind the net, finally grabbed out. As Valparaiso starting to get a little confidence here as Borger puts one towards the net. Friel's going to fish it out on the backhand. So, so McGowan from Friel and Middlebrook at 238 makes a 1 0 in favor of Adams. He's going back behind the net is Skinner and he'll send it back into the neutral zone where Ben Kincaid, senior defenseman, is going to come get it and he's going to go right behind. The net and Vince Shaw. He'll leave it for Lerman here on the near side. He'll send it back the other way to Zolvinsky. Zolvinsky's checked hard. Lafferty's going to pick up the puck for Valparaiso. And finally, Bryler gets it out of trouble and he'll bring it back behind Vince Shaw, the Adams Eagles netminder. Long stretch pass to Jamison in the neutral zone. He's got a step on two defensemen. Let's one fly. And Stouffer gobbles it up. He puts it right into the chest of Anthony Stouffer. Good opportunity there for Riley Jamison. I thought he lost it up in his pants there. What right when he was getting to the blue line, it kind of hopped up. It was a real wild puck, but he was able to bring it back down, go right through the slot, put a good uh, shot there, but right into the uh, chest there of Anthony Stouffer, so an easy save for him. So a couple of good opportunities here in the early goings for the Eagles. Uh, Zolvinsky, he'll leave it off for Kincaid, his defensive partner, who'll go up the near boards to Tau. Tau's pass picked off by Garber. And a shot right on. And Shaw with a nice left pad save. He'll put it in the corner. Now Albano going one on one. He's going to go wide and forced off the play. Nice job defensively by Lucas Harris. And Harris and Albano now in that far corner. Over by the old Zamboni end here on rink one. It's Cam Duranek tries to get it out of the zone. Said blocked by Kincaid. And Tao couldn't hold it in here on the near side. one nothing. Almost five minutes in to the opening period. Glad you could join us for Regional Radio Sports Network's coverage of the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League Tournament as Bogle behind the net on Stover throws it out in front. And Albano, puck just went right underneath his stick and it go all the way back behind Vince Shaw. Zane Sanders goes, tried to go 100 feet to Brandon Tau. Tau nearly lost the puck. He'll have it in the neutral zone. Gets by one defender, gets by a second. We'll dump it in. And he'll go for a line change. And Zach Skinner. He'll try to go right up the middle to Zolinski. And Zolinski mishandled the puck. And it's taken by Middlebrook. Middlebrook walks in and another nice save by Anthony Stouffer. And the Eagles not afraid to test Stouffer. But he's been up to the challenge with the exception of the McOwen goal. He has been very solid as an emergency starter tonight. About five or six uh, scoring chances now for the Eagles so far, and they've been trying to take advantage of some of those uh, turnovers that the uh, Vikings have had in their own zone. So they're putting it up to the test, but good job on Stouffer to uh, block away most of those shots so far. Just a reminder, the winner of this one takes on the winner of our game that's taking place on rink two, and at the end of two periods, it's Riley two, South Bend St. Joe one. As the Wildcats looking to advance out of the loser's bracket. Zach Skinner on the far side, loses the handle of the puck. But a nice job here on the near side of by Zielinski. And now Matias Webb's going to get the puck out to Ryan McGowan, but it'll just go as far as Borger in the Valparaiso end. Friel cuts to the middle of the ice and sends it the length of the ice where Cam Duranek will pick up the puck. A little bit of a sloppy last couple minutes for both teams as Garber gets railroaded here on the near side. No call as the play will go on. Webb tried to get it up the boards. He'll get a second opportunity. Webb flipped it out just past the outstretched hands of Garber here on the near side. And Garber will finally pick up the puck and then bring it back into the Adams zone. Garber, it's a high slot, 
shot blocked. And it'll go up into the netting. Nice job by Augie Perugini to block that shot. And six and a half minutes gone here in the first period. It still remains Adams one, Valparaiso nothing. Valparaiso's still a little sloppy here on their play on both ends. A couple bad, uh, they have a couple bad turnovers on their end and here in the attacking zone. They've been getting, able to get a couple shots there on Vince Shaw, but nothing has been uh, too solid there as there goes a shot wide. There's Andrew Lafferty with a chance to get a shot on goal. And now Riley Jamison. He'll get it up to the near side to Josh Lerman. Lerman one-on-one -on -one with Durant. Going to let one go, and a nice block by the defenseman. As Lafferty will bring the puck back behind the net, and that will go right up to Bryce Garber. Finally gets popped out of the zone, and it's a two-on-one if they hurry, and Cameron Garber lost footing. And now Jamison brings it back the other way. He'll get it to Lerman over the red line, now the blue line. Lerman 1v1 against Durannick, and again, the defenseman has Lerman's number. Puck goes back in the corner. Durannick and Lerman, one-on-one -on -one battles, popped out, and Lafferty is going to end up winning it. He'll get it to Bryce Garber, who will send it back as far as the, as the hash marks on the far side. Long stretch pass, and a nice job by Lerman to just dump it in the zone, and it'll be a wholesale line change for the Eagles. There's Borger. He'll get it up to Stone, back to Borger, and he'll get it to the red line. And now dump it in just as he gets over the blue line. one nothing game in favor of the Eagles as we're midway through the opening period. Zach Skinner puts it right back into the Adams Eagles zone, and Zane Sanders going to pick it up. Skinner with a nice hit along the far side. Boards on Sanders as Quinn Gooby sends it back along the boards as Sanders holds the blue line. Albano lost the side of the puck and he'll dump it back in on the near side. Skinner goes behind the net to pick up the puck for the Valparaiso Vikings. He's going to fire it off the board. It's going to go the length of the ice and it'll be an icing on Valparaiso and with 6.45 to go in the first period the faceoff will go to the right of goaltender Anthony Stouffer. Going back to that last uh, little rush that the Vikings had, a great opportunity for Chandler Garber, and as he made the call, he's looking to switch it up onto, from his left to his right, and got mixed up in his skates, and unfortunately fell over, so that took away that attacking opportunity. But uh, again, great uh, defensive uh, show here by the Vikings so far, as it's a, only one nothing. There's a shot here on the near side from Friel, goes wide of the net. Anthony Stouffer has been very impressive being pressed into emergency service as Henry Anderson was the original starter. But Stouffer has been up to the challenge. As the Vikings will dump the puck into the neutral zone as Liam George goes one-on-one. -on -one. And a nice job by Zane Sanders to force him off the puck as the puck goes right to the slot. And a shot right on as Harris's attempt was blocked. And he'll keep it back in the zone. As Webb on the far side will get it to McOwen. Ryan McOwen, the goal scorer here for the Eagles. A third liner getting the job done here in the Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament. We've seen in the past where this is those opportunities where those second and third line guys get the opportunity. They can make a name for themselves as Garber trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Shaw with a nice poke check here on the near side. Now Middlebrook, he'll fire it back along the far side as Webb tried to get a handle on it. McCohen can get it only as far as Andrew Lafferty. And a nice job by Valparaiso to keep the pressure on. It's Lafferty going to try to line up Matthias Webb. And a nice job knocking Webb off the puck. But finally, Ben Kincaid tried to walk around a defenseman. Couldn't do it. And once again, the puck is dumped back deep in the Adams zone. Uh, Zolvinsky goes to Breiler, goes cross ice to Josh Lerman. Lerman crisscrosses with Jamison. Back to Riley. Riley trying to hit Breiler going on the far side, and instead Zolinski will shoot it into the neutral zone and back in to the Adams third of the ice. Jamison, nice cross ice pass to Josh Lerman. His pass to the middle of the neutral zone was picked off by Stone, and it'll go the other way. Sam Borger. Over the red line on the far side, he'll dump it in. Back behind Vince Shaw. Shaw hasn't been tested a whole lot, but on the shots that he has been, he has been up to the challenge. As the puck will float out to the neutral zone, Cameron Duranek 
gets taken down. No call by either John Eason or Barry Mead as the arms stay put. It's Borger. Shoots at nearly too many men on the ice from Valparaiso. As one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Gooby is a nice job by Ben Kincaid on this near side. Once again, Adams having a hard time getting the puck out of the zone. And now Jamison avoids one check and he'll leave it off for Lerman. Lerman goes cross ice to Kincaid instead too far for him, so Bryler will pick it up. He'll leave it for Kincaid, whose shot is originally blocked. Jamison knocked off the puck, and finally a pretty good size hit mm -hmm. on that far side. I think a couple fans are looking for a cross check and there, but when you look at it, it was, it was a pretty low check there, a good hit. You can tell the section that we're standing by. We're standing by the Valparaiso section of fans. Not happy with that call. As Bryler will hit Brandon Tau, and Tau will dump it in here on the near side around the net. Back behind Anthony Stouffer. Harris gets double teamed, and now Tau comes out with the puck. Tau walks through a couple players. It goes right in on net, and Stouffer is the only one that can find it. He'll cover it up in his paraphernalia. And with 2.56 to go in the first period, the faceoff will go to the left of Anthony Stouffer. Okay, I think we'll mark up a Jack Lafferty shutdown for that one to start off this one with uh, Mr. Lafferty over there in the uh, penalty box serving as the goalie coach here for Valparaiso, one of the one of the best to ever coach he here is, in Michigan High School hockey. He is a staple here in South Bend High School hockey. He's been involved with high school hockey for over 40 years and he has turned out many a fantastic goaltender. And shot right on is gobbled up by Vince Shaw and he'll allow no rebound. And with two and a half to play, faceoff will be in the Adams zone to the right of Vince Shaw. Going back on Adams' last attack, you, you gotta give a lot of credit to the Valpo Vikings. They've been starting to clutter up the lane and. Uh, they're taking away any shot opportunities as that one goes up into the netting as we'll get another face off here on the far circle. But, uh, you know, going from that and again, outstanding goaltending so far and now the Vikings in their last couple of tacks, they've been starting to put some stuff together. So we started sloppy on their end, but now they're starting to connect with a few more shots on Vince Shaw. An update from McMahon Arena. That is rink two here at the Icebox. Calvin Kerwin has just buried a goal for South Bend St. Joe from Chaz Troster and it's 2-2 as Lafferty goes in two on one and a nice shot just wide of the far post. He came in on that right side and snapped one just beyond the blocker side of Vince Shaw. Good I think, effort. I think Zane Sanders was able to get a little bit of a stick on that one. It uh, held it, helped it deflect off to the left side or that one may have been a little bit closer to the goal than it was. As Tao goes right past Stone and he'll get by Borger as well. We'll go right to the net. A nice shot and a goal as Matthias Webb in the low slot buries a shot from a nice pass from Brandon Tau, and it's 2-0 in favor of the South Bend Adams Eagles. Kind of a carbon copy of their first goal is uh, you get a rebound and then a nice little shuffle pass in right in front of the uh, goalie there in Anthony Stouffer and able to just kind of chip it over, bury it in to make it a 2-0 cushion. So that'll be Matias Webb's fourth goal of the season. And Stouffer really no chance on that one as Tau danced around two Valparaiso players. Adam Siegel's goal, scored by number 22, Matias Webb. Assist to number 11, Brandon Tau. Time to go, 13-14 on the first period. So as you heard from Jeff Lafferty, Webb from Tau, it'll be Webb's fourth of the season, but more importantly, two nothing in favor of the Eagles. There's a cross ice pass from McGowan to the goal scorer Webb as Webb will circle on the far side as we're getting close to a minute to go here in period number one. Middlebrook on that far side is gonna lose it. And now back comes Valparaiso, two V two as losing it on the far, on the near side is Robbie Geis. As Garenic will just flip it right in. And... Got an offsides call there. 
by Bobby Jordan. I think so, you were looking for a little bit of a, I think a, you were looking for that hook there to go on to uh, on the uh, near boards here, but no call. And so far, uh, no penalties in this game. And I think it's very meet and John Eason are just letting them play so far. Some good hits. I don't think anything's been really too borderline, maybe a couple, but uh, good to have those no calls. Everybody. And in, in the city tournament, you really don't want to be you know, responsible for putting a team on a power play and, and giving them an opportunity here in a close game. As Liam George goes around the net, he's checked off by Josh Lerman, and the game's first penalty is going to be called on the far side by John Eason, and it'll be an interference penalty. So with 14.36 gone in the first period, the Valparaiso Vikings will go on the power play for the first time as Gavin Zolvinsky will go for interference. And Valparaiso, they have had eight different players nail a power play goal. Bryce Garber and Liam George leading the team with four goals apiece. Got that interference call there on Zolvinsky as Lafferty was going around the left side of the net to keep chasing after that puck and gave him a little shove from behind, tripped him up, and it was an easy call there for John Eason. There's a shot right on, and Vince Shaw with a nice butterfly save here on the near side. As with 10 seconds to go, Bryler is going to cross the blue line and dump it into the neutral zone where Harris will leave it for Duranic on the far side. Last chance effort for Valparaiso as a shot by Bryce Garber goes just wide and that will end the first period of play. So goals by Ryan McOwen and Matthias Webb, both third liners have staked Adams to a 2-0 lead as we're going to step aside as you're watching the Regional Radio Sports Network's coverage of the 2019 Michigan High School Hockey League City Tournament. came from every corner of the country, from small towns and big cities. But they all shared one thing in common. They belonged to a family called Marines, a tough and determined few dedicated to protecting everything we hold sacred. And still, they come. Celebrate the history of those proud few who have earned the title Marine. Centier Bank is Indiana's largest private family-owned bank. Since 1895, the Schrag family has built a legacy of success through business and by servicing the communities of northern and central Indiana. Centier's not-for-sale promise pledges to the communities we serve that we will continue to preserve independent banking in Indiana for generations to come. Centier Bank is proud to serve the communities of northern and central Indiana. Please visit Centier.com for more information and don't forget to like us on Facebook, member FDIC. Back here at the warehouse on Walnut, the ice box skating rink. We're at Lerman Arena in rink one. Just above center ice as the Valparaiso Vikings trail the Adams Eagles 2-0. As we get ready to start period two, Valparaiso will go from right to left on your computer screen or mobile device. The Eagles from left to right as Valparaiso still on the power play. Valparaiso Vikings six for the Adams Eagles seven. So Adams out shooting Valparaiso 7-6 in that first period. As Garber gonna get bopped off the puck by Lerma, by Jamison, and he'll send it the length of the ice. And Stouffer, looked like he lost it. Mm -hmm. And if the angle is right, you can lose it. It's a white backdrop when you're in the second period. And a nice job by Anthony to find the puck and make a nice save. Yeah, went from about our uh, blue line to the left all the way into right into his chest, and it was a great save on his end. And going back to talk about the goals, just seven to six on on the shots there, just goes to show you know Valparaiso we, they were a little sloppy to start. They got started to get some connections there to start it off there towards the end of the first period, and we saw them kind of get things together. So that was a great thing to see there, and just goes to show that you know it's it's been a tight game despite it being two nothing on the scoreboard. As the puck will go back. To Garber, nice shot on goal. As Borger now down low on the far side with 30 seconds to go in the power play. Skinner's gonna let one fly, and that one's just wide of the stick side of Vince Sean. Jamison's gonna carry it up 
into the neutral zone. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Skinner. He'll let it fly, and a nice save by Stouffer as he goes down in the butterfly. And now Duranek with five on the penalty is going to bring it into the Adams Eagles end on the near side. Duranek working on Sanders, going to throw it right in front. And a shot on, it's over the net. And Vince Shaw didn't really have to worry about that one from Liam George. And George mishandles the puck. And finally the puck is going to get sent all the way around. And it's held in momentarily by Harris. And now it's one on one. Brandon Tao working on Zach Skinner. Tao gets momentarily knocked off by Skinner. But Tao regains the puck and snaps it over the blocker side of Anthony Stouffer and it's 3-0 Adams. That was a great shot there by uh, Brandon Tao as he was able to uh, find that little uh, space there on the on the blocker side of Anthony Stouffer and siphon into the back corner. And so there was a little bit of a defensive miscue there on the far circle by the Valpo Vikings as Tao was able to get himself back together and set him up for a very nice sniped shot. So 3-0 now in favor of South Bend Adams as they are looking to advance to play on Friday night back here at the ice box and looking well on their way even though it's still lots of time to go here in the contest. As Zelensky will send it in on Shaw and Shaw bobbled it momentarily but finally sent it into the corner. As Borger send it back deep. And now Ben Kincaid, he'll skate it into the neutral zone, and he'll put it right off of Bogle's skate and goes right into the zone behind Anthony Stouffer. Albano, him and Harris with a nice battle along the far side. And it's going to be dug out momentarily, but Perigini, as Augie will let one fly over Stouffer's net. Good pressure here being applied by the Adams Eagles as we await the goal announcement on the third Adams Eagles goal is Ryan McGowan. Now on the far side, tried to send it in front. Unfortunately for him, no avail. And it will finally be lofted out by Sam Borger and it'll be, waved the icing will the be icing. waved off. I was, I was looking for an icing call and instead Adams is gonna get a chance to bring the puck out of the zone as Ryan McGowan will let one fly from the blue line and it's blocked by Cameron Duranek. Assistant number 97, Albano. Tyler Ball, 204, the second So Tao from Albano. Assist Albano at 204. At the 2.04 mark makes it 3-0. And once again, Ben Kincaid will have the puck behind his net. It's now Matias Webb. He'll send it in to the Valparaiso zone where Zach Skinner will bring the puck back behind Anthony Stouffer. Nice shot by Nathan Middlebrook on that far side as he's being hounded by two Valparaiso players and now Matias Webb and Andrew Lafferty get into a nice little puck battle behind the net. Finally it's one out to McOwen whose shot is blocked and now Zach Skinner in the far side gets hammered by Matias Webb. As now no one can locate where the puck is and now Lafferty and Middlebrook in the far corner. Finally, Zach Skinner says, I'll take care of it and I'll send it up as far as I can go. And Zane Sanders will dump it back in and finally sent the length of the ice, but no icing call as Bryce Garber goes behind the net. Garber in a battle with Zane Sanders. He's going to bring the puck to the bottom of the near circle. Hounded by Friel. Nice job by Garber to allow his teammates to get a change. And now Garber walks out in front as Geis. He'll leave it for Chandler Garber. Good pressure being applied now by this second line. 9.40 to go here in the second period. Still 3-0 in favor of the top-seeded Adams Eagles. Zach Skinner leaves it out in front and Liam George just beaten to the puck. As once again, Valpo is able to change one player at a time and keep fresh bodies on the ice. Nice job by Tim Crowley's squad. As the puck is shot into the middle of the ice and Nathan Middlebrook says enough of that and I'll send it the length of the ice. And a good shift 
by the Valparaiso Vikings. Playing very strong so far, and it's just, you look at the Adams Eagles, and they're just putting bodies in front of these shots. They're keeping them well uh, in position right now to where they're taking away most of those opportunities that Valpo can put on the net. So you got a couple shots that are getting through. Other ones are just being blocked off of skates, off of shin guards, and you know, just a good job there by the Eagles to keep the Valpo Vikings off the board. His face-off was won by Austin Hansen. And now Liam George tries to dangle through a couple of Adams players. He'll have the puck back behind the net. And had a couple of players wide open. But Gavin Zolvinski will send it on to the far side to Tyler Loback. As Adams' fourth line is out there right now. As Kincaid brings it into the zone. Kincaid trying to put it towards the net to no avail. And now Zolvinski will just send it back in deep. Robbie Geis on the far side. He'll send it. 140 feet, where Vince Shaw will play it behind his cage. Last shot was looking for Austin Hansen. Had a good sh good shot there in the slot, but it was knocked away and uh, went the other way. So great job there on the Valpo side to keep the puck out of the net. As Kincaid will lose the handle of it, and Vince Shaw will say that's enough. We'll regroup. And with 8.14 to go in the second period, the faceoff will remain in the Eagles zone. It'll be to the right, or to the left rather, of the Adams captain, Vince Shaw. Shaw, one of the captains that the Eagles have. Riley Jamison is the, I guess you could call him the official captain, as he's the only one that can actually talk to the officials. Mm -hmm as the goalies cannot cross the red line. as a two-on-one break. Lerman going to walk in, and a nice job by Cam Duranek to interrupt that play. Jamison quickly double-teamed. He'll lose the puck, and now Breiler sends it back, and Duranek will shoot at the length of the ice. It'll be an icing on Valparaiso, and the faceoff will go to the right of goaltender Anthony Stouffer. If you're just joining us, Stouffer, an emergency starter for Henry Anderson. And has played very well in the first half of this contest. Anytime you can get your backup goalie to put in and put in some good work, it's always a good chance for him to even look at getting some uh, more starting time. Although it's towards the end of the season, these are more of the prime games to see that your emergency goalie can do the job in these uh, tight situations. As Garber's gonna leave it off for Bussy, and a nice job by Shaw as he snags the glove. He'll stick it out. And just one second from the halfway point of the contest, and the faceoff will be to the right of Vince Shaw. Another great scoring opportunity. As you mentioned, Bussy putting it right under the right side of the net, but Shaw just sticking that glove out there and swiping it up. Nice, good scoop there at the last second to keep it out of the net. As Lucas Harris here on the near side trying to get the puck up the boards. Instead gets it to Breiler, and Breiler bumped off the puck by Bryce Garber. A nice little pop by Garber. Breiler will turn around right at the blue line. He'll send it back in as Lerman's got the puck behind the net. He'll leave it for Jamison. Nice little cycle as Friel with a chance. Tipped on by Breiler just wide. And now it's Adams' top line going to work. Breiler here on the near side. He's going to hold on to it. He'll cycle it down low to Jamison. Jamison steps around to check. He's going to walk right into the front of the net. And shot on and caught by Anthony Stouffer. And he'll hold on for the whistle. Like the effort there by Borger right in front of the net. He's had a couple of Eagles players right in front of him. Keeps uh, trying to get him out of the way there of the netminder Anthony Stouffer. So uh, Stouffer can see the puck. And he's trying to make sure that those guys don't have any scoring chances there. So he kept giving them little stick pokes here and there. So nice play there by Borger. Clean one win by Bogle on the far side. And, his sh and the shot by Augie Perigini is blocked. And now Valpo with a chance. To Liam George over the blue line here on the near side. Shot on just over the net. And it'll skip back out to the neutral zone. Liam George has had quite a few opportunities here so far tonight. He's got some good pop on his shot. But the only problem is he, most of those shots he's tried to get popped out there have gone over or wide of the net. Got to start getting those on, on the net. Now Zach Skinner will send it too far out of the reach of Chandler Garber, and he'll go the length of the ice for an icing. 6.15 to go here in period two. 
the first of five games that the Regional Radio Sports Network will cover. We'll be back here on Friday night for a doubleheader. First game's at 6.15 between the winner of this one and the winner of Riley St. Joe. The second one between Penn and Lakeshore in the final of the winner's bracket. The winner of that game gets a day off before the city final on Sunday at the Compton Family Ice Arena. As Perugini couldn't keep it in and now Ron Stone on the far side trying to get a good rush and now Brandon Tao over the blue line. Tried to go one on one with Borger and a nice job by Sam Borger to knock Tao right off the puck. Borger being a defensive menace for the Eagles there in the slot. That's the third rush that the Eagles have tried to get into the, into the net but Borger just keeping his body right there and taking away those scoring opportunities. And of course, the, the one word that if you're an official or a scorekeeper, you really don't want to hear when it comes to this, but I'm sure the fans love it. Overtime over on rink two between, between Riley and South Bend St. Joe. It's a five minute four on four sudden death overtime. As Stouffer holds on to the shot with 5.33 to go. Matias Webb trying to just keep it on low on the ice there and get it under the pads, but uh, yeah, still for there. Scooping that one up pretty quickly. Another uh, good scoring opportunity taken away there by the Vikings. There's five and a half to go. As Borger goes right up the ice to Bussy, and now Lafferty's gonna carry the puck in offside. It'll be a delayed offside. And finally blown dead on the far side. Yeah, the misplay there by Bryce Garber. Andrew Lafferty was able to come back and get that one, but Garber was on the left side of the blue line about two or three strides over, and he was unable to get back uh, to the neutral zone to keep that play alive. A pair of former Irish select teammates as Ryan McOwen defeats former teammate Andrew Lafferty on that draw. The two coaches of that team? That's right, myself and <laughs> Jeff Lafferty, who is announcing and scorekeeping this evening's game. What a pair those two were on that Bantam Select team. Talk about the players or you and Jeff? Ryan McGowan is one of the reasons I'm up here now instead of being on the bench. He's, a, I'll tell you what though, two great kids, great athletes, and great families. And it was a joy to coach them. Shot right on by Lafferty. First save by Sean, he'll cover it up. But a nice job by Andrew Lafferty. As McGowan Taps him on the rear end, says, good job, buddy, but I'll get you the next time. And just under five minutes to play until the two teams leave the ice for Lafferty. intermission, and Lafferty. it's three zip. Lafferty did a great job on catching Shaw off guard. Shaw started to move to his left while Lafferty was going to the right, but uh, he was able to keep his stick out there and take a couple of opportunities away from Lafferty, but great pressure here by the Vikings That's in this last minute. As Liam George puts a shot on, and a nice job by Shaw once again to make sure no rebound comes loose. We will keep you posted on that game on rink two. 2-2 two -two between Riley and South Bend St. Joe. The loser is eliminated from the 2019 Michigan High School Hockey League City Tournament. And what a way for our first day of coverage to go. As Liam George over the blue line. He's going to spin around Zane Sanders and throws it to the front of the net. A nice job by Josh Lerman. He'll flip it up to Ethan Breiler. Breiler will leave it for Riley Jamison on the far side. He'll stop right by the hash marks. Tries to throw it in front. And unfortunately, it was too far for Josh Lerman. Zane Sanders now will dump it right back in. He'll give it to Lerman, who goes behind the net to Jamison. Try to throw it. Nice little backhand pass between his legs. Couldn't do it. And Breiler gets the puck right back, and he shot it on. It is just wide of Anthony Stouffer. Sanders going to cut right in front, and he stuffs it right into the glove of Stouffer, who couldn't hold on to it. Now Sanders on the far side is going to keep it in deep. And now Jamison beats his man. He'll look to work around with the puck. Duranek trying not to let him out of his sight. He'll win the puck battle, and he'll send it behind the net of Anthony Stouffer as Harris lost the handle of it and Liam George is going to grab it and he'll send it the length right on Vince Shaw nice job 
by Liam George forcing the faceoff in the Adams zone. Puck had eyes there on Shaw as he was watching it bounce in, bounce, take a couple bounces, and I'm sure I'll tell you, you, what, you being a you being I, a goalie yourself, <laughs> you've seen probably your fair share of those. I, and probably one of the scariest things you know, you're going to see out there. Yeah, you, you either lo you lose it in the lights, you lose it in the bricks, you lose it in something. Those are some scary shots. I'd, I'd rather take shots, you know, coming at me from five feet away than having to deal with a shot like that. And I'm sure if you're if somebody out there is new to hockey. The temperature of the puck, just to go in a little technical terms, can also have a little bit of a change in traje tra trajectory or some of the weight on that. You get a frozen puck, it's going to stay hard onto the ice. But if you have a warm puck, that thing's going to be bouncing all over the place. And, and we've seen it at Notre Dame games when we're working that, you know, that those pucks are flat when they're nice and cold. But the longer that game goes, the, the more that thing bounces. Yep. And... We've seen Cale Morris and Dylan St. Cyr, the two goalies for the Fighting Irish, we've seen them have some trouble not with only some with, of the bouncing pucks. Not only with bouncing pucks, but you go back to the uh, outdoor game and you're talking about losing pucks, including on that, that first one that Cale Morris went against when you have dark seats in the back at Notre Dame Stadium. Lost that one, and that was shot from the left side of the, of the red line, too. Yeah, that was... A very interesting experience for Morris as a shot right on by Stone it is gloved and dropped by Vince Shaw as we dip under the three minute mark here in the second period. As Gavin Zolvinsky on that far side, he'll send it around the boards to Ryan Albano. Albano is going to put it in the neutral zone, and Zach Skinner will retreat to his own end. He'll leave it for Sam Borger, who goes cross ice. And a nice job finding Bryce Garber right off the bench. Garber dips around one man. He's going to try to get to the backhand, and it goes just wide of Vince Shaw. Golden opportunity for the Vikings. As now Kincaid. He'll hit Brandon Tao, scorer of the last goal. And Tao gets roughed up. And finally, Sam Borger could get it out, but Ben Kincaid with a nice pinch here on the near side. Two minutes to play here in the second period. As now Friel crosses the blue line, he'll leave a pass off, and now Bogle, who was doing a nice job coming back and covering for him, will leave it for Kincaid, who puts it over the net. And that shot had some mustard on it, and he'll go back into the neutral zone where Friel will pick it up. You could just tell by Stouffer's reaction, and he didn't see it until it was right in front of him. Luckily for him, it was about three feet higher than the crossbar. Adams has done a really great job of trying to screen the junior netminder. There's Liam George in a battle with Zane Sanders, and the defenseman for the Eagles will win that battle and gets it to Albano, who loses it. Now Liam George dips around one, couldn't get around a second guy. And now Alex Bogle will just simply chip it into the Valparaiso end here on the near side. Cameron Duranek fires it around the boards. As Jeffrey Lafferty announces there's one minute to go here in the second period. As Matthias Webb picks up the loose puck on the far side, he'll circle. And he'll leave it deeper. Cam Duranek of the Vikings will send it right back to Webb. As a check on the far side by Robbie Geis. As on the near side, Chandler Garber got popped by Middlebrook and gets popped again. And now the puck loose in the neutral zone. Or Friel will get it in. Fortunately loses an edge and now Ryan McGowan will send it back behind the net. Harris on the far side to Chandler Garber. As the Vikings having a tough time breaking the puck out, and it finally goes out of play. Nice job on that far side by Charlie Friel to kind of do his best Mike Trout impression <laughs> to keep that puck in the field of play. I think unfortunately for him, it hit a, hit a uh, player there on the bench before he was able to get his glove on it. So, uh, Bobby Jordan there on the far side called that one out of play, so they have that face off here at the far circle with eight seconds to go here. We have a winner over on rink two, Kuba Jaskowitz. With a minute and a half to go in overtime, wins it for the Indians. So the South Bend St. Joseph Indians win 3-2.
over the Riley Wildcats, foiling a terrific effort from Michael Peterson. 41 saves for the senior from Riley. As the Indians outshoot Riley 44 to 23. So the Indians will live to see another day. That'll be that 6-15 game coming up on Friday against the winner of our game right here so far right now, seeing Adams up 3-0. Just so, a second and a half to go here before our As division. McGowan will win the draw back to Jamison, who couldn't get enough on that shot. And that'll do it for the second period. Unlike the first period, where it's just a minute intermission between periods, the two teams will head to the locker room as the Eagles of South Bend John Adams lead the Valparaiso Vikings 3-0 at the end of two periods. We're going to step aside when we come back. We'll have stats and analysis of the first two periods, and we'll get you ready for period number three. As you're listening and watching, Regional Radio Sports Network's coverage of the 2019 Michigan High School Hockey League City Tournament. The young men and women who become United States Marines come from our hometowns to become a part of something greater than themselves. This commitment represents the highest level of steadfast allegiance to the betterment of our communities, our country, and our Marine Corps. The journey will be one of the most challenging, but also one of the most rewarding. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is the sound of advising. If it's quieter than you expected, that's because it's coming from a Horizon Bank loan advisor who knows the first step in advising is listening, understanding. That the most important aspect of expertise is not what we know, but how we apply it to what we learn about you. Visit horizonbank.com and get a conversation started. This is a Horizon Bank commercial for loans. It's a time most advertisers carve out to tell you all about themselves, why you should like them. In short, a chance for them to talk to you. So why aren't we telling you about our loan services? We're waiting for you to tell us about yourself because what you have to say is more important than what we have to say. Visit horizonbank.com to get a conversation started. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, the Marines. There's always a... It's pouring rain, it's real dark outside. Your heart starts beating really, really fast. You've never done anything so hard in your life. This is boot camp, this is the real thing now. It's such extreme pain, you don't understand how you can finish. I began to feel that there was no way I was ever gonna have my title, U.S. Marine. It takes special inner strength, courage, and desire to do this. I was just thinking, I'm so close, I'm so close. And when I, I finished, I was like, I'm done, I did it. The moment I will never forget is when this drill instructor that I admired so much comes up to me straight in front of me, put her arm on my shoulder and said, good morning, Marine. PFC Summer Volkman became a Marine. Can you? Visit Marines.com or call 1-800-MARINES. The few, the proud, the Marines. When your child's in the hospital, the last thing you want to do is to leave their bedside. If we had to leave the hospital at any time, it would have drove us nuts. The family room was definitely a blessing for us. We needed to be close to our daughter, and it gave us exactly what we needed at that time. Make a difference in the life of a family when they need it most. Give to the Ronald McDonald House at Memorial Children's Hospital in South Bend. Donate to our new house at loveshinethrough.org. Hi, this is Paul Condry of the Regional Radio Sports Network. That may be my professional title, 
But did you know that I'm also the son of a U.S. Navy World War II veteran and a proud father of the United States Marine? Let me share with you something very close to my heart. It's called the Semper Fi Fund and its program, America's Fund, which provides immediate lifetime support for post-9-11 wounded, critically ill, and injured members of the U.S. Armed Forces, veterans, and their families to ease recovery and transition back home to their communities. The Semper Fi Fund, serving those who preserve our freedom. The basic idea that drives these efforts is simple. For as much as our heroes have sacrificed, they deserve the best care and support available in their hour of need, whenever it may occur. The Semper Fi Fund, a four-star charity and an A-plus rating, has served over 16,000 members since 2004. The Semper Fi Fund, serving those who preserve our freedom. For more information, visit them online at www.semperfifund.org. Welcome back to Intermission here at the Warehouse on Walnut, the Icebox Skating Rink, as we are between the second and the third period here of Game 5 of the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament. J.P. Jobert along with Nick Duranek and our cameraman, Christian Jobert, who's been doing diligent work with the camera tonight. As we may mention, this is the 2019 City Tournament for the Michiana High School Hockey League. It is a double elimination tournament. We have already had our first team eliminated as South Bend St. Joseph came from behind twice to knock off the Riley Wildcats. We want to congratulate Coach Ron Duvall and his Wildcats on a very successful season this year. And this is a very good fifth seeded team. They're going to be playing in 2A of the state tournament down in Fort Wayne. The draw might not be as favorable as he wants. He's got Culver B and then Bishop Knoll and Leo in his half of the bracket. That's that, that's a solid three other teams in your bracket. And then you've got to take on Homestead, Munster, Brabuff, or Summit City, which used to be Fort Wayne Snyder. So a very tough four-team pod in the bottom of that 2A bracket. But Ron Duvall's got the goaltending in Michael Peterson. 44 saves tonight against South Bend St. Joseph. And when you have a hot goaltender, Anything can happen in the state tournament. Oh, no doubt. I mean, when you, whenever you get that hot goaltender going out there, if he can stop shots, you can you look at you can look at any team right now in the state tournament. If you got a hot goaltender that's saving 40 or 50 shots, he could probably stop against any of these teams out there right now. And that's what you got in in Peterson right now. And taking a look at you know their matchup in the two A's against Culver B. Uh, Culver historically always a great program no matter what level you look at down there. And it's gonna be a tough test for them, but uh, when you look at the goaltending and when you look at some of the hot offense that Riley has been able to put on so far this year, not only in the Michigan High School Hockey League, but just in the crossover games as well, they're gonna have a good, I, I think they're gonna have a good game against Culver B. And that will take place March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd down at the Sport One Parkview Ice Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the brand new three sheet facility and I don't know if it's brand new we'll call it it it's been there in the for last a couple 10 years, years yeah last 10 years as I my first professional off-ice officiating job was down there as I used to work for the Fort Wayne Federals of the Great Lakes Junior Hockey League with one Robbie Shintani who is now an official with the Big Ten Conference so who says low-level junior hockey cannot get you somewhere as it has been a. All you, all you got to do is have the experience, and you keep moving on up. Robbie's a great guy. Uh, you know, we get to see him every now and then, uh, lining the Notre Dame games in the Big Ten. And uh, I know uh, he's uh, he's a he's a fun guy to talk to. He has a great sense of humor, and even on or off the ice, you always see him smiling. That's something I really enjoy about him. But he's also really professional when it comes to what he does on the ice. He, you know, I, I do the video replay for, for the Big Ten, and anytime I look at him making his calls on the blue line, he's keeping that keen eye down there. So good job there on Robbie Shintani. I'm going to bring in Christian Jobert. And Christian, we talked about Riley and what they've got to deal with in Fort Wayne. St. Joe has no picnic either, as they've got probably one of the most surprising teams in the entire state of Indiana in their first round of the state tournament. And that's the Zionsville Ice Eagles who came out of nowhere, and they are the number two seed in the state of Indiana. And then if you win that, you got to take on 
a team that has really been the surprise of Northern Indiana, and that's the Adams Eagles led by Mike Jamison. But probably an even bigger stunner is the fact that Carmel Gold would be the road team in that contest. So a very tough 3-6 matchup between Adams and Carmel Gold, and we haven't even gotten into the upper part of the bracket, and that's got Culver A against Lakeshore and Penn against Lake Central Blue. This is a tournament where you could see two of the perennial powerhouses in Carmel, St. Joe, and Culver possibly go 0-2 in this tournament and not make it to the third day of the tournament. Well, and especially, you know, in a situation with St. Joe, you know, coming out of a, a loser's bracket in the city tournament, which, you know, JP, you and I both know we've been there before. And, you know, this is the second season in high school hockey right now. Forget about what happened in November, December, January. The season started last week for these kids uh, with only a limited amount of games to go. They have now two tournaments where it's two losses and you're out. And I think Chris Kleba is in the locker room right now telling his boys, hey, we survived. It's a survive in advance now. So we just need to keep this train rolling. Dolan Gilbert is obviously the backbone of that team. You know, his 21 saves today, leading his team in overtime. Uh, like Nick said earlier in the broadcast, a hot goaltender can you know, make or break any, any team in any tournament. And that's what we are gonna probably see out of St. Joe. This is his senior year. It's his last go at the at the Golden Cup, and you know he knows that he's. Th these are his last games where he's going to be playing in front of his family and friends. And as a senior, you know, you and I both know we we've played those games before, and we don't want it to end. And however, he's only got about three weeks left, depending on how far that he wants to take this team. You look at Dolan. I mean, you talk about a hot goaltender. You know, for several of the games that I've scorekeeped for St. Joe this year, St. Joe plays not only a lot of good in-state competition, a lot of great out-state competition as well. He had a 2-0 you know, loss to Notre Dame Prep earlier in the season and a 1-0 loss to Jackson Lumen Christie in which he had over 30 saves in both of those games. And you talk about talking, uh, going with some of that hot, hot talent out there outside of Indiana. Those are some great tests for Dolan Gilbert and just even over his career, has had to go against some of those same teams. And again, a lot of credit to him. A season that started in Chicago with a game against St. Rita will end here in South Bend or possibly in Dyer for the state championship game on Saturday, March 9th. Class 4A will be here at the Icebox. Class 3A will be down at the Fuel Tank and Fishers. Class 2A and 1A will be at the Park 1 at the Sport One Parkview Ice House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm gonna ask both of you a quick question. This season, it's, it has flown by. I, it was, it's hard to believe. I, it was like last week, I thought we were in August, and now all of a sudden, we're in February as everyone starts to finish up their seasons. Anything that has stood out to you, any surprises from not just the league, but across the state as well. Nick, I'm gonna start with you. You know, going in the league, I'm, I'm just surprised that this Adams Eagles uh, team uh, with the turnaround that they've had over the past couple of years, you know, kind, kind of struggling uh, and then going up to the big number one seat here this year. So it's been nice to see. And this is going back to when Adams had that merge with Marion uh, back then as well. And just seeing the changes that they made on the bench and the changes that they made up on the ice, but also keeping a lot of that great talent when they were merged together. It's been nice to see how Adams has really come together as a team and go from, you know, that bottom tier all the way to the top tier in the Michel, so that's been really good to hear. And I, as far as the state goes, I mean, we, we talked about the four A teams in there, and really every one of those teams we listed off, maybe with the exception of Adams, you see them there constantly in that 3A or that 4A uh, contest up there. So it's no surprise to see what, what you have as far as the top tier uh, talent goes for the state tournament this year. And as we mentioned in the pregame, JP, I'm really looking forward to seeing how those 4A games come out because you're going to either get really high-scoring offensive games or you're going to get one to nothing games with that favorable goaltending. So that's really the uh, part that I'm looking forward to as we uh, head into March. Christian, I'm going to send the same question over to you. What are some of the surprises you've seen here in the league and in the state as well? Well, obviously, the, like Nick said, the first thing I noticed was the Adams Eagles. Um, you know, 
we've said it before, goaltending will goaltending can make or break your season. Vinny Shaw's 21 wins so far this year, four shutouts, uh, has actually has set a benchmark for the season uh, for a lot of teams around the state. And not only that, but if you look at Adams' roster, uh, the two big additions that they received uh, midway through this season with Josh Lerman and Bennett Kincaid. Uh, you know, Josh definitely contributing up front, Bennett contributing on the blue line. Uh, and that's two big key players uh, that these that this Adams Eagles team desperately needed. And that shows with a turnaround. You look at Vinny Shaw's record right now, he's standing at a 21 at 21 and 9. And Zach Sterfoss has only five losses in net as well. So 14 losses in 45 games for this Adams Eagles team. It's definitely nothing you want to shake your head about. And really going back on Adams goaltending as well, uh, a couple weeks ago, you had both Shaw and Searfoss out for injury, and then you had Barabitsky taken over as well, and Barabitsky did a really good job for the couple games he was in there as well. Well, the big, to me, the big surprise, I'm going to go outside the box from, from you guys, but to me, the big surprise is a team that's not even going to be participating in the city tournament, and that's the Southwest Blades. There's a lot of questions as to whether or not this team would actually fit in this league. They are a very, very experienced team, 13 seniors. They have one foreign exchange student. They just ran through the league. Unfortunately, due to a prior scheduling commitment, they're not going to be participating in the 2019 city tournament. They played Culver A tough for two periods and then ran out of gas, and Culver A just basically shot them out of the building. But this is a team that we found out over the course of the year could skate with anybody in the state of Indiana. And as far as the state is concerned, I'm kind of shocked that, one, Michigan High School Hockey League got four teams in 4A. I, we knew the league would be good. I don't know if anyone expected the league to be this good this year. And really, it's a credit to all the coaches that are involved. Craig Brown over at Penn. You've got Mike Jamison at Adams. you got Chris Cleva at South Penn St. Joe and John Kohler coaching the LSJ Warriors who really are going to have a test. And it, it's a very winnable test against Culver A. Culver A is not invincible by any stretch of the imagination. But another shock is actually in Class 3A. I was expecting the Central Indiana Knights and the Hamilton Southeastern A team to have really successful seasons. And they're in mid 3A. So it's very possible that, as we've made mention, two of the superpowers, usually in, the, in Indianapolis, in both HSE and Central Indiana, may not even be playing for a 3A state title because they're going to have their hands full. Bloomington was a surprise this year, and that's who HSE will draw in the first round. And Columbus is no slouch as a seventh seed. So both CI Knights and HSE are going to have their work cut out for them. Luckily for them, they're back at home at the fuel tank in Fishers next week. So both teams back on the ice for the third period. Valparaiso will go from left to right on the computer screen on a mobile device. There's a shot by Liam George goes wide of Vince Shaw and Ethan Breiler, or Hayden Breiler rather, will send it the length of the ice. And an icing will be called on the Eagles just 15 seconds in to the third period. And really, just before we get more into the third period action, I'm really glad you brought up the Southwest Michigan Blades. Is you, you don't see them in this tournament, so it was, I mean, to me, as a broadcaster, it was kind of easy to forget about them because they're not here. But I'm, I'm glad you brought them up because they had a really strong season, and I'm looking forward to seeing them actually participate in this tournament next year, and, you know, maybe they can get to the state as well. As Breiler had a nice drop pass from Jamison as it goes wide. Southwest Michigan's actually going to be, I believe they're on probation for three seasons okay. before they can participate in the state tournament, but they would be a very welcome addition in that state bracket, and there would not, there would still be, a, there actually might be a couple play-in games as there are 33 teams in the state of Indiana this year. And you just talk about the, we just talked about the 4A uh, teams in contention there for the Cup this year. Southwest Michigan, they could put up some great, great competition against any of those teams. As Barry Mead will have a penalty as his right arm is raised and it'll be a tripping penalty and Adams will go to the power play for the first time this evening. There'll be a tripping call on Robbie Geis a minute five into the period and this vaunted Adams Eagles power play 
led up front by Riley Jamison's 12 power play goals will go to work, but it'll be the second unit as it'll be Brandon Tau with Bogle and Breyer. Jamison back on the point. It's a great opportunity right now for the Eagles to put one away early here with this power play to see if they can uh, extend their lead and possibly put this one a little bit further out of the reach for Valpo. Five forwards on the power play here for the Eagles. So a little bit of a new look here from Coach Mike Jamison as his son Riley is going to bring it here on the near side. He'll turn at the hash mark, left it for Tau. And the puck will go back to Bryler who will dump it in on the backhand. Jamison back up top to Bryler and loses the handle of it and goes back in the neutral zone. Bryler being harassed by Andrew Lafferty. He'll leave it for Riley Jamison. Jamison through the neutral zone over the blue line and now down into the low corner. Jamison to the boards to Tau. He beats one man, snaps one just high over the crossbar. Now Josh Lerman, far side, goes to the top of the circle. He'll cut to the high slot, shot on, and a nice left pad save by Stouffer. Jamison now far side blue line. He'll go cross ice to Lerman. Lerman back up top to Jamison. Riley with a shot, and it'll be gloved and held on to by Stouffer with 52 seconds remaining on the Robbie Geis minor penalty. Once again, Sam Borger doing a great job, giving his uh, netminder a little bit of chance to see uh, a little bit more than what he can with uh, some guys there in the slot and blocking him away from any sort of vision there. But again, credit to Borger, because he did really well in, that in the second period, getting it going here on this PK as well. So Tim Crowley changes the penalty kill unit as Riley Jamison now back to Lerman. Top of the circle, he'll go to the blue line. Shot down low to Breiler. Breiler back up top to Jamison. He's going to walk it in. Let's one fly and a nice block by Chandler Garber. Breiler up top to Jamison. Sends it down low. And now Breiler here on the near side boards. And at the blue line, he'll go across to Jamison. To the dot on the far side. And Tau sees the pass. Get deflected by Duranek. Now up top. Lerman slaps one on. And it's tipped. And it goes in. I didn't, even see the, uh, I didn't even see the point there come from Barry Mead. I saw the guys put their, their sticks up, but I guess we'll have that as going down as the official goal. Well, Stouffer made it look like he had the puck, and instead it trickles between his pads. It'll be a power play goal, and the Eagles will now lead it 4 nothing. So the Eagles are now 12 minutes and 8 seconds away from a date Friday night with the South Bend St. Joseph Indians. And what a double hitter that would be. And you know, when you look at you know, Stouffer, he's been having a great night tonight, and that's just one goal right there you would like to have back. He, he got down in the butterfly as quick as he could to take that one away, but it just ekes through the pads there, trickles over the goal line. And when you look at it, I mean, it's been a tough game already. They're down four to nothing now, and just give him lots of credit, though, for what he's been able to do so far tonight. But that could be a deal breaker right there. As a faceoff on the far side is dumped in by Austin Hansen. So Bogle's fourth power play goal of the season. That's two goals for the second line, two goals for the third line. And this vaunted line of Bryler, Jamison, and Lerman have been shut out of the goal column. And if you would have told Mike Jamison before the game even started, you're up 4 nothing, and your top line hasn't put the puck in the net, I think he would take that in a heartbeat. <laughs> but you go back to what you know, uh, Coach Crowley was talking about is how deep these forwards go for Adams. If it's not the first line score and you still got the second and the third lines, I can still put it in the back of the net. So that's a that's a big uh, that's a big plus for what the Adams Eagles have been able to offer all season. As Bryce Garber tried to go one on one, he'll leave it for Lafferty, and now Bussy, who's actually wearing jersey number 18 tonight, and now the puck will go to Hanson. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, <laughs> I originally put down Chandler Garber with that switch. And now it's it's good to know that it's it's Bussy. I've been yeah, a bit confused that, on that all night. There are th there are three Garber jerseys. There's 18. There's nine and four. The nine and four are correct in our in our game cards, but Bussy is wearing 18. 
as Middlebrook, he'll leave it for Kincaid. And puck just bouncing all over the place. As finally Sam Borger on that far side. He'll send it high off the glass. A nice job by Nathan Middlebrook there on the far side. Now Zane Sanders stick handles around one guy. And delayed offsides. Quickly wiped away on the far side by linesman Bobby Jordan. As Middlebrook here on the near side gets bopped off the puck. And finally sent back in by Chandler Garber. Ten minutes exactly to go in the third period. The Eagles are that close to a Friday night date with Chris Cleva's St. Joe Indians. And what a coaching matchup that'll be. As mm -hmm. Two of the, all six, all six coaches are just great minds. There's a shot right on by Liam George on the far side is blockered away by Vince Shaw. Zane Sanders will pick up the puck. He'll skate to the neutral zone. Sanders goes one on one shot, a nice skate save by Anthony Stouffer. Now Chandler Garber trying to get the puck out of the zone. Instead, Charlie Friel sends it just wide of the net. Liam George on the far side, a nice pop by Mateus Webb. George gonna exit the neutral zone. He'll take it on the backhand and he'll flip it in towards Vince Shaw. That was a nice little fight there. I think uh, Liam George got away with a little bit of an elbow to the head there, but uh, right now in the in the game that it is right now, I don't think they're going to really look to call too much against either side of the team as it's a little one-sided, but not giving up the fight at the same time if you're the Valpo Vikings. That's a nice job by Skinner to knock the puck away from Peyton Joseph. As Duranek and Joseph tangle behind the net, and it's finally one ear on the near side by Riley Jamison. 4-0 lead, allowing for Coach Mike Jamison to mix up the lines. The delayed penalty as Shaw heads right to the bench for the Eagles. And once again... I think we got might have two. Well, we got a cross-check being called by Barry Mead, and John Easton's coming over to talk to his partner. Yeah, Barry had his hand up down here for about 15 seconds, and I noticed here in the last couple seconds uh, John put his arm up. So are we just getting a confirmed call maybe? I think that's what it is there against Cameron Duranek, who's going to get called for the cross check. So with eight and a half to play in the third period, Adams goes back on the power play. They're already one for one in the game. And this is a big one because if Adams scores on it, the clock starts to run yep. until Valparaiso gets it back down to four. One of the rules here in the Michiana High School Hockey League, a five goal deficit, and they play running clock on all stoppages with the exception of injuries. As the puck will be shot down the length of the ice and Vince Shaw will have it right behind his net. You'll also notice no trapezoid behind the net. Which is nice if you're a goaltender, you, you can roam. <laughs> you don't have that little space to play the puck behind the net. And there's Jamison with a cross dice dump and he'll get dropped as soon as he releases the puck. Tau. Behind the net, he's going to go back up top to Jamison. A nice little one-touch pass to Bryler. Back to Jamison. Jamison will go down to the near boards to Bryler. Bryler behind the net to Tau. A nice little one-touch back to Bryler. As the Eagles are content with playing keep away. And a nice shot by Bryler. Stopped by Stouffer. Lerman on the far side. He'll go to Hayden Bryler. Bryler with a shot and scores on the five hole of Stouffer. And another Adams Eagles power play goal. Breiler's 11th of the season in the first line for Adams. Finally gets a goal and it's five zip as the clock begins to run. I think with Stouffer there, it didn't look like he even saw that one. He saw it go right to his pads. He was still standing up and right at the last minute you could see his knees buckled it. He wanted to go down, but it was already in the back of the net. So the Eagles have called timeout. Kind of a rarity when you see a team up 5 nothing. They're the ones calling the timeout. Right. So we're going to step aside. 5 nothing Eagles as you're watching the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. They came from every corner of the country, from small towns and big cities. But they all shared one thing in common. They belonged to a family called Marines. A tough and determined few.
dedicated to protecting everything we hold sacred. And still, they come. Celebrate the history of those proud few who have earned the title Marine. Eagle Power Play goal served by Bryler. 7.19 to go in the third period as Hayden Bryler's 37th goal of the season makes it 5 nothing, And the clock on the very next drop will begin to run as the puck is dropped and the Eagles win the faceoff. Kincaid going to send it back here on the near side to Tau as it's quickly picked off by Chandler Garber who will dump it back in front. And now... If you're Adams, you do want to tack on that sixth goal just to keep the clock running. You don't want Valparaiso to get any kind of momentum. And as Kincaid will go across the blue line, he'll dump it in front, right in front of Stouffer, and it'll go to the near boards. I think Christian made a, a great point there during the break. Is uh, it was a smart timeout. Is if you're if you're uh, if you're Adams, you don't want to commit any dumb penalties right now with the clock running for the next seven minutes and give Valparaiso a chance to start to eke back their back, eke they're way back into the game. As Tao will send it behind the net to Ryan Obano. Obano goes to the left point to Jamison. Jamison dances around a couple of Valparaiso Vikings to Kincaid who's shot. Misses the net by a good 10 feet. And Jamison will dump it back in on the backhand. He'll find Tao whose shot goes right through the slot. And Kincaid on the far side. Now on that far side, Tyler Lobach. He'll go behind the net. He's checked off by Sam Borger. A nice job by Borger to separate the man from the puck. And Borger is going to get rewarded. He'll dump it in, only to be blocked by Kincaid. And finally in the neutral zone is Bryce Garber. Zach Skinner here on the near side will fire it back behind the net. Vince Shaw will watch Riley Jamison go after it. Now Lobach to Albano. Over to Tao, over the red line. He lost the handle of the puck. And the Vikings will come back the other way as Bussy shoots one right on and into the breadbasket of Vince Shaw. And it's lodged somewhere in the paraphernalia of the senior netminder. Right in that right pad there. And I thought that was going to be like the same goal that Adams just scored where it goes under the pad and ekes its way out over the goal line. For a second, I thought it was a, it was a goal there, just the way he was kind of looking at it. Face off one by the Eagles. The Sanders will simply flip it out into the neutral zone, gets popped for his trouble. Under five minutes to play here in the third period. Adams up 5 nothing, and looking to advance to a Friday night showdown with the Indians, a winner 3-2 in overtime over the South Bend Riley Wildcats. As Josh Lerman looks to get in the zone, trying to go one hand around Cam Duranek, who will have nothing about it. And Duranek will dump it into the zone. Now on the far side, Seth Hine. And a nice four check. And Zach Skinner sent it back into the Adams end. Now Matias Webb leaves it for Charlie Friel over the red line. He'll cross the blue line and take it down deep behind the net. He'll cut in front and a nice check by Zach Skinner on Charlie Friel right in front of the net. And I don't think Friel saw Skinner coming and Skinner gets railed right in front of the Valparaiso bench. As Duranek gonna fire at the length of the ice and that'll go for icing. As things starting to get a little chippy here at Lerman Arena with 3.45 and counting left with, in the third period. I think with it being still in, in the Mitchell, you're going to get that little bit of extra physicalness uh, as we get here towards the last three minutes. And right now it's Valparaiso. Fox running, you're down 5 nothing. You're going to try at least to put some hits there on the Eagles now. Obviously, you're not going for that intent to injure that you never want to see out there. But uh, you're going to see that little extra physicality come here for the last three minutes. As the puck goes right in front, and Bryler, as Coach Mike Jamison, starting to mix up the lines a little bit as Kincaid snaps one home. And once again, Stouffer screamed on the play, and Kincaid pops one over the glove of the junior, and it's 6-0 Adams here in the third period. 
Nice look by Bryler at the top of the of the slot. He found Kincaid cutting in, and he rifles one from the top of the right circle that Stouffer never saw, and it's six zip. It was a nice little top shelf for it too. You got that little water bottle pop that people love to see on that one. So nice little shot there. Not all of us goalies like to see the water bottle fly <laughs> up in the air, but a great shot by Ben Kincaid. Adam's Eagles goal, scored by number two, Ben Kincaid. Assist by number 43, Hayden Brammer. And number 42, Peyton Joseph. Time of the goal, 11.52 on the third period. Adam's goal, scored by Kincaid. Assist by Brammer and Joseph at 11.52. Just be glad this isn't like a 1-1 one -one game. Apologize for the technical difficulties as the phone jack dislodged itself from our audio unit here in the Icebox Skating Rink. But we are back at 6 nothing in favor of the Adams Eagles with just about a minute to go here in the third period. As Mr. Jeff Lafferty, so gracious in his announcing, lets us know. So the Eagles will improve to 31-14-2 on the season. Valparaiso drops to 9-29-2. And they will be looking forward to their next contest as they will head to the state tournament. They will be in Class 1A as they will take on the Bulldogs of Crown Point. It will be their set Crown Point second team. They're also in with the Carmel Blue Icehounds as the three seed and the Fort Wayne Bruins, formerly the Northrop Bruins, as the six seed. As the time winds down, 15 seconds as Duranek will have the puck. He's gonna get his pass picked off. And finally, Geis is gonna bring it into the neutral zone. Jamison will retrieve it, he'll give it to Shaw, who will just dump it right to the side boards and that'll do it. The Adams Eagles on the strength of Vince Shaw's fifth shutout of the season, advance to the semifinals. They'll go to the final four where they'll take on the Indians of South Bend St. Joseph after a convincing six nothing victory over the Valparaiso Eagles. We're gonna step aside when we come back, we'll put a bow on it and we'll get you ready for our continuing coverage from the icebox of the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament. Centier Bank is Indiana's largest private family owned bank. Since 1895, the Schrag family has built a legacy of success through business and by servicing the communities of Northern and Central Indiana. Centier's not for sale promise pledges to the communities we serve that we will continue to preserve independent banking in Indiana for generations to come. Centier Bank is proud to serve the communities of Northern and Central Indiana. Please visit Centier.com for more information and don't forget to like us on Facebook, member FDIC. The young men and women who become United States Marines come from our hometowns to become a part of something greater than themselves. This commitment represents the highest level of steadfast allegiance to the betterment of our communities, our country, and our Marine Corps. The journey will be one of the most challenging, but also one of the most rewarding. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is the sound of advising. If it's quieter than you expected, that's because it's coming from a Horizon Bank loan advisor who knows the first step in advising is listening, understanding. That the most important aspect of expertise is not what we know, but how we apply it to what we learn about you. Visit horizonbank.com 
and get a conversation started. This is a Horizon Bank commercial for loans. It's a time most advertisers carve out to tell you all about themselves, why you should like them. In short, a chance for them to talk to you. So why aren't we telling you about our loan services? We're waiting for you to tell us about yourself, because what you have to say is more important than what we have to say. Visit horizonbank.com to get a conversation started. Welcome back to Regional Radio Sports Network's coverage of the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament. The Adams Eagles advance with a 6-0 victory over the Valparaiso Vikings. And Nick, we talked with Tim Crowley before the contest. He made mention of the depth of Adams. Six different goal scorers. Hayden Breiler, Brandon Tau, Alex Bogle, Ryan McOwen, who got credited with the game-winning goal, Matthias Webb, and Ben Kincaid, the six goal scorers. When you can beat any team and you've got six different goal scorers this late in the season, you know you got something special going. And for Mike Jamison and his squad, this was something special tonight. Yeah, you look at it, and we were talking about it pregame. We talked about it during the game as well. And it's about the depth of these forwards out here. You talk, You said Hayden Breiler scored one. That was the only goal that the first line for Adams scored. The other five were by the second and the third lines. And you took, you take a look at you know that first line, you go 74 points, 90 points, 47 points, and then everything under that is under 50 or even much less than that. So you talk about a very strong Adams team that they they didn't fail to, uh, to produce here tonight. And that's exactly what you expected out of them. That's what they showed all throughout the season and uh, continuing here into the uh, city tournament as well. So that's what we're going to start to see. Well, not start to see, but we're going to continue to see uh, as we go a little bit further, including into Friday night. Goaltender Vince Shaw, 22-9-0 on the season, collects his fifth shutout of his senior season. Wasn't tested a whole lot, but when he was, he came up big, especially when the game was close early on. Yeah, the scoreboard doesn't really say it a whole lot, but when you look at Valparaiso, they played really strong tonight. They had plenty of uh, scoring opportunities. They were putting shots on net, and if they weren't on net, they were still solid shots that were just going wide of the cage. And uh, talking about a Valparaiso team that's really struggled so far this year, uh, you know, you still give them a lot of credit, not only on the offensive side, defensive side, they were putting guys in front of the net. They were trying to take away every extra opportunity that Adams was trying to put out there. And I mentioned his name many, many times. Sam Borger was one of those key guys that uh, just stood in the slot for those guys that were trying to get uh, scores into the back of the net. So, uh, again, scoreboard doesn't show it, but I really like the effort that Valparaiso put out tonight. Valparaiso, this is a very young team, only one senior in Liam in Ben Swihart. He did not play tonight. He was out for Valpo on defense, but a very young team. The future looks bright for them. Anthony Stouffer, give the young man credit. He played very well. Yes, he gave up six goals, but he made some big saves to at least give Valparaiso a chance to get back in the contest. Unfortunately, they couldn't put any pucks past Vince Shaw, but when they needed a big save, Stouffer came up and gave them at least a chance to come back in this contest. Yeah, exactly. And you know, We were talking about Stouffer in the pregame, not one that we were expecting to see as Henry Anderson's also been a, a good clinical goalie there in front for Valparaiso so far this year, but uh, it just goes to show that Stouffer is uh, putting on a good show for Valpo for the years to come here. And not only, I mean, just for the future seasons, but even going into the playoffs as well, Tim Crowley's got a couple of great goaltenders to go to. Again, we talked about Henry Anderson, and you've had the chance to coach him yourself as well. And uh, it's it's a couple of great netminders that Valpo's going to have going into the 1A State Tournament. We made mention that Swihart was the only senior. They actually have two, Liam George, the other senior. And I thought when... They had a great offensive rush. Liam George seemed to be the one that was causing a lot of the problems for Valparaiso. They've got a young first line, but it looked like any time that Liam George had the puck in the Adams end, he was making a lot of progress and trying to get anything towards the net that he could on Shaw. 
you know, Liam George had some great speed here tonight, and uh, when you looked at his stick putting those shots towards the net, they were they were very quick shots as well, just uh, not getting them on target like I'm sure he wanted to tonight. I'm sure he had plenty of the uh, scoring opportunities that Valparaiso had tonight, so give him a lot of credit for trying to set some stuff up and giving him that chance to get onto the board. But if they were if they were going on net, you got to give a lot of credit to Vince Shaw. He was st stopping, you know, the, the shots that Valparaiso had. But, uh, you know, very strong player, and uh, I hope he's able to continue that career in either a club level or some uh, as he continues on. Well, let's look ahead to Friday night. It's going to be a great doubleheader. Yep. First matchup. Adams and St. Joe. What do you like about each team, and who do you like coming out of that one? Well, when I take a look at, I mean, just both of the games, Adams, St. Joe, you're going to have a very high score. Or I, I, I take that back, not for this game, but for the next game we'll talk about here in a moment. You look at great goaltending by Adams and St. Joe. We talked about Dolan Gilbert at the intermission, who has been just a brick wall in front for the Indians. And then you got Vince Shaw, who put on a clinic himself here tonight and has all season. And, again, we look at him 21-9. and nine and just a little over a 90 save percentage. So you're going to have a couple great net minders. And when you look at that, I, I still like uh, Dolan Gilbert on that end. I think it's going to be low scoring here between Adams and St. Joe. I'm going to go 2-1 to one St. Joe advancing uh, to that next game. Who will They will get the loser of the other game that we'll have here Friday night between Penn and Lakeshore. And when I look at those two teams, I go from low scoring to high score. Now that could be a track meet as both teams like to use their speed. Ethan Matthews has been a one-man wrecking crew in this tournament. Eight goals in two contests. Lakeshore is going to be ha having to look out for him. Lakeshore is a very deep, a very exciting team to watch. They've got Nick Wilford in goal, who was outstanding in last year's Michigan High School Hockey League championship game that you and I did over at the Compton Family Ice Arena. He matched Dolan Gilbert save for save. So I, it could be that we end up seeing a rematch on Saturday between St. Joe and Lakeshore. You could see Adams and Penn playing for the city championship as well on Sunday at Compton. It's going to be a great weekend of high school hockey. It all kicks off at 6.15 p.m. on Friday night when the number one seeded Adams Eagles takes on the number three seeded South Bend St. Joseph Indians. Pre-game show will be at 5.55 p.m. Game two, 8 o'clock p.m. Number four, the Penn Kingsmen taking on the number two LSJ Warriors. Both games right here at the Lerman Arena, rink one of the Icebox Skating Rink. Semifinal will be on Saturday night, 6 p.m. here at the Icebox, 5.40 pregame show. And then Sunday afternoon from the Compton Family Ice Arena, 3 o'clock start, the city championship game. A champion will be crowned for the 2019 Michiana High School Hockey League City Tournament. We encourage you to stay with us all weekend long. Check the website, rrsn.com, for the times and viewings of the games on our website. That's going to do it for us from Rink 1 here at the Icebox. For Christian Gilbert, for my broadcast partner, Nick Duranek, this is J.P. Gilbert. Once again, the final score, the Adams Eagles move on with a 6-0 victory over the Valparaiso Vikings. Have a great night, everybody. All right. Don't forget to hit.